Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. This show is all about life transformations and our journey from where we were to why we are doing what we are doing today. We will discuss the hiccups, the roller coasters, and the blood, sweat, and tears that has been poured out while discovering our purpose. It is all about our transformation. Here is your host, Sean Douglas.
Michael, are you with us? Can you hear me? Well, we're going to work to get him back here. Um, And in the meantime, if you have any questions for our guests that we bring on the show, you can call us up at 657-383-1109. The number is 657-383-1109. You can call us up, ask us questions about increasing sales, how to grow your business, and what it takes to get from the five to the six figure, from the six to the seven figure. Everybody wants to start making this in seven and eight figures, but you got to do the work first to get into that mindset that it takes. It takes a certain mindset to get into that six and seven and eight figures. So hopefully we get Michael here and get him rolling. Michael, are you, are you with us? Awesome. Man, I, got, I can barely hear you, my friend. Something now. The volume is super low. See if we can't get the mic fixed. Michael, you still here? Michael, you still, if you can hear me, try turning up the gain on the mic or whatever you're using. Hello, Michael. I got you. Can you hear me? There he goes. Here we go. Let's try that. Is that any better for you, Sean? Oh, there we go. Got you nice and loud and clear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. To... Technical issues on this side. Apologies. Oh, morning. yeah. Our listeners are listening to us work through some technical stuff. It's awesome. 
Yeah. That's the worst ever. So we'll see you for your patients, bro. Perfect. Where are you calling in from? I'm calling from beautiful Melbourne, Australia. Australia? It's like 5.49 a.m. over there, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty close to that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. I didn't know you were in Australia. Hello? I think we lost him again. Hey, you still there? I can't hear you. Hello? I'm here, mate. Oh, there we go. <laughs> kind of went in and out a little bit. I got gotcha. you. Um, okay. Right. So I did, so yes, I had no idea you were in Australia. Yeah. Well, there you go. It's, uh, it's a beautiful part of the world. Have you been down here? I would love to go. My dream is to go to Australia and speak. I don't care oh. anywhere. On a milk crate, I don't care. But I want to go and get booked to speak in Australia. Okay. <laughs> well, we could probably help you with that. That's that's my ultimate dream is to is to go to Australia. So awesome. Yeah, man. Well, you walk so, on, and it's um. Yeah, we, we need your we need your your message. I'd say. <laughs> Perfect, man. It'd be awesome. So talk to us about increasing sales, and growing your business. I just gone through um, the bio. You know, uh, worked with over 20 startups, multiple seven-figure business businesses to increase their sales and grow. Uh, so yeah. talk about that. What does it take to grow to that seven-figure business and increase those sales to get there? Sure, yeah. Well, look, I think, it's, I think it's really good to kind of focus in or dial in on, on, on maybe some of the issues in your, your audience will be dealing with, right? So you mentioned yeah. that there's probably entrepreneurs, speakers, business owners who are listening to this. So um, if you if you really well across all of those, one of the biggest things is about self promotion, right? And, and one of the most common mm-hmm. issues we come across is that people have issues with, um, you know, especially in the speaking world where you know you're the product. Um, sometimes it's easier in a business where you're you're one step removed from being uh, the product, so you might be selling, you know, you might be selling a, a widget or whatever you might sell, and so. Um, it's really about how you communicate that and where most people fall over uh, is where they, they really, they speak from what they're trying to say rather than where, what they're, you know, if, if you want someone else's money, you need to be able to talk to them and in their language. Mm-hmm. And so if it's no point coming from your perspective, and, I, and I'm sure you do this when, you, when you're preparing for your talk, Sean, is that really understanding, you know, the needs, the concerns and issues that your audience may be dealing with to make sure your pitch or whatever you're doing is relatable to that audience. And what we find when it, if you're trying to take a business from six, seven to eight, it doesn't really matter, is you really have to be in tune with what your audience and the pain points and the issues and how they see a certain um, you know, topic. And if you can do that better, what you'll find is there's an engagement and then that leaves you with the opportunity to kind of close yep. some of those more deals and things like that. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. One thing that I've noticed is that if you solve a very expensive problem, you can command those higher fees. Another, another, an, another tip that I have when it comes to that is you have to be very clear on the problem that you solve. And sometimes the problem that you think you solve isn't actually the problem. So I say that there is no such thing as a retention problem in the workspace. That's the result of toxic leadership. That's the result of toxic environments that people work in. They're leaving their job in droves. There is no such thing as a retention problem, which you find out is people don't want to work for the guys upstairs, or they don't want to work because there's somebody in the office that is – terrible and is unpleasant to work with. That's, 100%. So if you, if you think that you solve a retention problem, you don't. 
you solve a toxic work environment problem. So sometimes we think that we're solving a certain problem, but we're not actually solving that problem. You just got to reframe it in a certain way. So you go to the bosses and go, hey, I solve a retention problem. They're like, heck yes. You go to the people who are actually not being retained or they're leaving quickly and say, hey, I solve a leadership problem. And they're like, yes. You're right. You have to speak to their language because the bosses don't think it's them. They think it's the employees. And the employees don't think it's them. They think it's the bosses. So it's really that fine line that you got to walk. 100% right. And I think it, it came down to, I was actually, yeah, giving a presentation and I, um, I, I asked some of the audience members, you know, what are some of the products? Uh, also, what, what do you sell? And um, I don't recall the specific product, but this lady, it was, it was something to do with kind of uh, time management and reducing and making basically HR easier. And they were like, oh, we, we, you know, we, we sell uh, this, this software. And I was like, no, you don't. And they were like, they look to be weird. And I was like, and they said, no, we do. It's like this product, it's got this computer software. And they're like, that's what we sell. I was like, no, you don't. What you sell is basically you make HR managers' lives easier. And they were like, ah. Yep. Uh, and so this is where, you know, if, you, if you're having issues communicating or basically you're finding there's a resistance with your prospects or with your marketing or with your sales right now it's often to do with a lack of basically there's a mismatch between what you're communicating mm-hmm. and how the customer sees the, the issue just that how you've talked about that Sean so oh, 100%. in terms of in terms of growing a business um, and, and like you said to answer your, your question around six to seven to eight figures what those businesses all really do is that they can they communicate in the right way. And that can be different messaging. And this is where if you do Facebook ads or things like that, you can actually be really good with working out what message resonates with your audience the best. And then, you know, not only that, then what which which messages um Right. Yep, absolutely. Are you still there? I'm still here, sir. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I was like, I, was, so I thought I heard, I thought I heard the beep. <laughs> I, was, I always get scared. I'm like, did I hear a beep? <laughs> Somebody <laughs> clicking off. I'm like, oh my god. Um, so, so tell me about why. Why did you pick this? Why did you pick startups and and work with uh, businesses to get them to multi seven figures? Is this something that you always wanted to do? Sure, I think no. Well, actually, here's why I did it: is that when I was when I first started, I was thrown into a sales role. You know, I was I was super enthusiastic. Um, I, I started off in solar power, in the world of renewables, and I started because I was a passionate environmentalist. And mm-hmm. I started in that world, and I had su- lot, lots and lots of passion, but absolutely zero skill. So I'd get on the phone, and I'd find people who would have similar passion to me, but they'd end up going, "Well, thanks for all the information," and then they'd go somewhere else. And so those early years of trying to sell, I found absolutely painful. I couldn't pay my bills. I couldn't, you know, my experience was I couldn't make a difference because mm-hmm. you know, whilst I thought, what well, I thought selling was about was just being, you know, who's the most enthusiastic, who's being the nicest company, um, all this kind of stuff. But actually persuasion and influence is not necessarily about that. Those are factors, but, to really get someone to buy into your message, you need a very different skill set from just being nice or likable. And so these are, um, these are the skills which I noticed that if you can learn them, then it makes life a lot easier, especially when running a business. And this is where, you know, a lot of the work I do these days is working with maybe engineers, specialists in a certain area who've left the workforce and gone on to build their own business. And a lot of them, whilst they may know engineering or accounting or you know, a lawyer, they might know those fields really, really well, which makes them good to start their own business. What they lack is the kind of perspective of what a, um, how you might grow and what's the systems you put in place to help grow a business or to even understand um, yeah, how to attack a market and how to assess a business idea's viability. Oh, outstanding. 
So the whole premise of the show is about our transformation. But he, mm. you know, came out of the womb speaking. Tony Robbins had to build just like Gary Vaynerchuk had to build just like Grant Cardone and like all these guys that we idolize and we had to they, they had to put in work. Mm. So what was that one transformational moment that happened in your life and was the catalyst to put you on the path to what you're doing today? Yeah, great question. So I think it and I was I was listening to your TED talk and um, preparation. Uh, to, for coming mm-hmm. on here, and I, and I, I, I admire you for your, you know, you went to the really dark places, and you're really open about that. And mm-hmm. the, whilst mine wasn't perhaps quite as dark, it was as um, as meaningful to me. And this was really when I was in, sure. I was in this, uh, was in a sales role, and my colleagues around me, and it was only, it was, it was only five of us, right? And I just, so there was the boss, and there were four others there, and the four others were all very similar age to me. Three of them, so apart from me, I looked at them and they appeared to be being successful. They could make sales, they could influence people. But every time I'm on the phone, I'm like getting jittery, I'm shaky, I'm like, oh, what am I going to say? <laughs> and, and no matter what I tried, I thought I sounded the same as these guys. I thought I was doing the same, but I, I just didn't have the results. And so, and at the time, I lived very close to my work. And I remember driving back one day, my, my wife and I went for a day trip and I was coming, we were driving back towards work and the stress, like my wife said to him, what's wrong? And I was like, I can just see the building I'm working in. And just coming back from the weekend was enough to cause me this kind of anxiety and stress. And so it was really, for me, it was like a, do you stay in sales um, or do you, you know, do you quit and move into something else? You know, was it, was it that bad? And for me, I was like, oh, man, I'd, I'd be so disappointed if I didn't try and figure this out because sales for me is it's, it's almost like the most entrepreneurial employee role that you can get. Right. And so if you're going to start in, you know, if you're going to become an entrepreneur, a lot of the skills you need is you need, you need to be able to communicate. Um, you need to be able to get someone on board with an idea. Um, you, know, I, you need to be able to learn to close a deal, like get commitment, because that's a that's a real big difference from just selling something or kind of you know convincing someone of something. Getting them to hand over right. their credit card is a really core skill. And so, I, it was at that point I was like, man, I've got to work out how to do this. And my brother bought me this book. Um, he just found it randomly online, and I started reading it. And this is a book called Spin the book. Selling, and uh, it was called Spin Selling. Spin Selling, okay. Yeah. And what spin selling does, and I've read lots of sales books since, but spin selling specifically breaks down questions and it gives you four different types of questions. And four types are, the first one is situational. So spin stands for, yeah, um, this is an acronym of situational, problem, implication, and then need payoff, the fourth one. And so situational Hmm. and problems are really just kind of very common. So they're like, you know, uh, what's your name? You know, what type of house do you live in? You know, what's the problems you've got? Blah, 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 blah. That's all kind of simple stuff. And we do those almost with no training. But what people find is that the book goes on to talk about implication questions. So when I start to say, okay, well, you know, what's the impact of the fact that, you know, you've had a leaky roof or that you've had a high electricity bill um, or that your business isn't performing as you want right now? So these are all implication questions where they're a bit more... um, you know, they're asking a, a lot more of the person you're communicating with. And what I found is as I started to, I learned, I spent the time every morning I'd get up early go and sit down with a coffee and start learning and writing out these questions and learning my script better and actually really being diligent in like knowing that, you know, I'm suck right now, I'm rubbish at this, but if I keep pursuing this or I keep working towards it, then it makes logical sense that I'll be able to, um, improve and get better in this area, and that as I, it was it was that step by step progression that and yeah willingness to not give up, which has actually started to really allow me to you know improve my own kind of a personal economy, um, but then also gave me the passion to go far out. This sales is really cool if you can work out how to learn it and if you can tap into the skills. What kind of skills? Which do you? Uh, those out. Sorry, say that again for me. Yeah, you said you had 
so you learn the skills. And I said, what kind of skills? I mean, but I mean, is there like certain skills that we got to drill down on? I'd say absolutely. And I think the biggest ones is it, it's, Sales for me is all about communication and it's learning and, oh, yeah. and, and there's also an understanding about human psychology, right? You know, um, let's take you, for example, you know, if I was trying to sell you something, Sean, you know, if I, if I come all out, all guns blazing and talking at you and like, this is the best thing since sliced bread, Sean, I can't believe like you'll <laughs> love this. I, you, and then as soon as I'm push, 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 right? What people will do is they'll back, back, back off. Right, and they'll they'll pull away, and so sales is about um, how do you communicate in a way which is engaging with another. How do you talk to someone such that they're pulled into the conversation and that you can take them on a journey? Because mm-hmm. what people often are really poor at is actually doing that. Most people, we think communication is talking at people. But that's not communication. That's just talking. Communication is where I can engage you and say, okay, Sean, so, you know, what are you trying to do? Where do you want to take your business? Or, you know, why are you interested in this widget? And then it's having the skills and understanding that, okay, cool, you know, I've got to meet you where you're at. Mm -hmm. Because I want your money and then you want my product, right? So we need to do an exchange of value or whatever it is. And so... Yeah, the skills are really uh, learning how to communicate and, and communicate. And, and so what I mean by that is really understanding that questions are far more powerful than talking. Oh, and, my gosh, yes. <laughs> and also, even for yourself, right, asking yourself questions, um, you know, like, how can I improve or how could I improve my life rather than saying my life sucks, right? Right. Even asking yourself questions is often far more fruitful <laughs> than coming out with statements. Right? Oh, 100%. Um, so, yeah. So those are some of the skills I'm talking about. One of the one of the questions that I ask when I get online for a coaching call or I'm doing a group session, I will say, what is one question that we need to ask you or what is one question that you need to ask yourself that we could ask you right now. And you'd be surprised at some of the answers. Some of them will be like, what do I need to ask myself? Um, yeah, what's, what's one thing you really need to be asking yourself? And one person, I remember one person was like, mm. how come I'm not doing more? Like, oh, okay, well, how come you're not doing more? How come you're not doing more than, than you are right now? And then it come. It was I don't have time. I didn't have this. Da, 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 da. I was like, uh huh. You just asked yourself the question and got the same excuses that everybody else gives you as a coach. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. no time. This that. So what would you tell yourself? And so when I am on the call, I want them to coach themselves through things because we're the worst coaches ever <laughs> like, for ourselves. Like we we can tell a business what to do, but like when it's our business, no hope. <laughs> no, Absolutely, no hope for our life. <laughs> like you know, so I just got in the habit of asking myself the questions that I would ask somebody else. You know, and and I get used to talking to myself. I'm like, man, really need to get booked for this gig. I think it's gonna happen. I'm like, how can I, how can I make it happen? How can I get booked for this and so i literally like oh, how can i get booked for the entrepreneurs whatever conference like how do i get booked for that i'm like how do i get booked okay well if i'm coaching somebody else I'm gonna do this and do this i'm gonna reach out to them i'm gonna send them an email so do reach out and send them an email cool got it do, 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 do. and so you know, i've developed systems over the years just by coaching myself way that I would coach other people just by asking questions that I would ask other people. The same thing mm-hmm. that I do with my students, I'd be doing with myself. And so that's what I've done. What? That's awesome. And how, how has it worked? I guess is the question. 
Oh, I mean, I'd say like 50-50. <laughs> yeah, I, I have my just I have my coach because I'm gonna be like because I could say, well, how do I do that? I'm like, oh, it's this way, and this is what I would do, and then it fails, and I'm like, I'm not listening to me no more. <laughs> like, mm. so you know, does it works about it, does it? My speaker awesome. coach said the same thing. My speaker coach is like, dude, you know how many no's I get? And he's like a 20K speaker. He commands uh-huh. 20K. And I said, well, sh- you'd be speaking everywhere. Sh-. Like, you probably never get no. He's like, dude, I get no's every day. I'm like, no way. He's like, I'll send out four or five proposals a day. Okay. He's like, and I'll get four or five no's. You failed like the entire day. He's like, pretty much. And then the next day, I do it again. And I apply. I, you know, make connections and I talk to people. And I mean, that's that's the nature of the business, you know? Not everything is going to be a yes. You have to get past that. Like, you might be a no this year, but next year, you might be a yes. Never know. I've actually had people contact me six months later. Hey, we had a conversation about six months ago. I wasn't, I wasn't really, uh, Available at that time. I am now. I'd like to proceed with your coaching. Holy crap! <laughs> it blows my mind. I haven't talked uh. to you in six months. But they, but you know, that's what I find amazing. Absolutely, absolutely. And look, I think it's um, sales is about that fine print. You know, a lot of people put sales, um, they they think it's something which is quite either. It's the sales doesn't have a great reputation, right? Because if you think of a, you know, if I say think of a salesperson, who do you think of, um, Sean? When I think of a salesperson, mm. like a name or like a characteristic? Just that, yeah, characteristic. Think of, think of a salesperson right now. Who comes to mind? When I, yeah, when I think of a salesperson, like they're a salesman, they're whatever. I That's instantly, right. <laughs> what, what? No, sorry. Go on, go on. I, I misunderstood. <laughs> did I? Did I? So, are they two different things? A salesman and a salesperson? <laughs> uh, no. no. Well, I, no. But, well, there you go. Right. There's a male char- characteristic straight away. Right. There's a, yeah. it's a bloke. Right. And then yeah, what else? Right. And that's that's what I was thinking. It was like it's it's a salesman, like like a dude. Um, uh-huh. Honestly, man, what I think about when somebody says uh, you know, salesman or salesperson or you know whatever, I just I, I'm hoping they're not going to be spam. You know, I hope they're not going to be aggressive. Yeah, right. That's the, literally is. the first time. You know, but I, I'm very comfortable in telling someone where to go and how to get there. Um, if they if they start being, oh, do it for your family. Like I will murder your face if you bring up my family inside of the sales conversation. <laughs> I'm not new. You know what I mean? Like, and they pull out all. The- well, what would it mean to you, dude? You're not a coach, so I'm not. I, feelings aren't in this right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I, I still comes back, come back for every spammy, little aggressive ridiculousness that 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 they say. Right. So, how much do you enjoy talking to that salesperson? That particular one, none. And I could tell in the first couple minutes how the conversation is going to be. I could just, I could just. Tell. It's it's the way that they, it's the words that they use, mm. mm-hmm. and their approach. A hundred percent. It's either a customer approach or their approach. Either way, a transaction is being made. I'm going to sell him on the reasons why I'm not going to join, and he's going to sell me on the reasons why I should. And in the mm. first five minutes, if he goes, let me tell you something, Michael. You need to do this. Why? Because millionaires get the right to do this. And you want to be a millionaire, don't you, Michael? And they start asking this type of questions. I'm like, I know where this is going. Because it's all him at that point. He's telling you everything you want to hear. You want to be a, I mean, don't you want to be a millionaire? One time I was like, no, actually, I don't. I'm happy making 480000 a year because at 481000 a year, you are now the 1% of the income earners in the United States. Four hundred eighty thousand. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. very comfortable making four hundred eighty-one thousand dollars. I'm comfortable making five hundred thousand. I don't need a million dollars. Well, uh, I mean, I mean, you, you got to make a million. I'm like, why? Who says? Who says I have to make a million? He was like so flustered. He's like, what? <laughs> like, does it? Like, does anybody want to be a millionaire? 
the ones that I want to talk to are, Michael, what can I do to serve you? What is it that you need that I can provide? That conversation I love. Awesome. And yeah, so where I was going with the question is that if you think about most people when they think about sales have a very negative um, yeah, they're pre- they associate with force, um, with pressure, with slimy. There's often a level of deceit, um, yeah, which is kind of sewed into that too, right? And so, yeah, I think one of the biggest issues with sales is that if you're a new business owner or if you're if you work in sales, all of a sudden um, you kind of get tarred with this. And, I, and like I, when I introduce myself as a sales coach, people often kind of do a double take because if mm-hmm. salespeople are bad, imagine someone who trains salespeople to be the bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So uh, you're the cause. <laughs> oh, my God. It's you. Like you're going around right? training people to do teach- that, right? And it, Right. <laughs> uh, Let me no. teach you how to pressure, force, and coerce someone. Now, that's isn't that going to be a sure. great conversation? So, for sure, one of the biggest one of the biggest things, though, as you as you've just alluded, is there's sales and then there's sales, and that uh, actually there's been lots of times. I remember when I was buying a car, I there was a there was a guy called Andrew. He made me feel special. He helped me identify what I was looking for. He showed me the vehicle. He was very polite, and he helped the buying process be a lot easier. You know, he yep. helped me navigate all the finance and stuff like that. And and then at the end of it, when I was trying to go, negotiate with him and I was hardballing him, he stood his ground and said, "No, I can't do that." And the whole way through, though, it was a pleasure dealing with him. And then I referred him on to other people. And so there's examples where, of course, you meet those bad salespeople, but I think what people miss is that sales done badly is not actually sales. And it's a bit right. like an American, you know, when you play American football, you know, it's not that I'm particularly familiar with, um, with your type of football, but if you think about, you know, a, 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 the, what football on, at a school level or an amateur on the weekend compared to, football played in the highest oh, leagues yeah. in the in the final right it's called the same thing but would hardly be recognizable if you really dug into you know the right. preparation the training the skills the tactics the um all of those things but they're called fundamentally you know football is football but but really when you go into the higher levels of it it's really not and so this is where um getting over those kind of misconceptions or that perceived reality or that perception that you have to be this kind of pressurizing, horrible kind of person um, to be a, you know, to be effective in sales. Cause that's often what the mantra is. Well, you have to push harder. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you? <laughs> um, <laughs> right. right. So, so I think, yeah, for what we spend a lot of time, working with people on is, is exactly that helping overcome those issues and helping them find um, I love what you said about asking questions of yourself you know like how would how do you like to be sold to rarely do people turn around I like to be pushed into a corner my arm held behind my back and then forced a pen <laughs> into my mouth to sign a signature right um, right no I, I'm yet to come across someone who says that so if you ask yourself well how would you like to be sold um, then, and if you start to go from that, okay, well, how can I replicate that um, experience for someone? Then... Do you know? Do you know what'd be really funny? And I was just, I don't, my my mind works in really crazy ways. It'd be really <laughs> funny. Sure. So you're a sales coach, right? So we meet, we're talking. Like, what do you do? Cool. What do you, what do I do? Cool. Awesome. Yeah. How do you, you know? How did you get into that? You know, we're just having the, the prelim. You know, conversation, right? Mm. You know, what would be awesome is if somebody and and I, and I would love for this to happen. If some, even if it was a car salesman, like like Michael, so you're a sales coach. I have a product for you. I think that it would 
or, or, and I have a program. I have a product and a program that I think would help you. How can I sell you on this today? And just like literally, like, how would you like to be sold to? <laughs> like, I'm just saying. It's a great question. It's a great if question. If that ever it? happened, I would be floored. Hey, Sean, I know that you're a speaker <laughs> and I coach speakers. How can I sell you on coaching? Like, what? <laughs> That's your job, not mine. I'm just thinking, like, what if somebody did do that? Well, if someone did that, would that be effective? Would that be a, would that be an effective way to sell you? I I wouldn't even know what to say. I'm like, uh, don't 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 fluff, don't BS, man. Tell me what you're gonna do. Like, if we're gonna work together, like, what's like what's gonna happen? Oh, we'll do this. We'll do this. We'll do this. I'm like, cool. What's the results? But and then I make a decision. Because most of the time, I don't want to sit through a pitch. That's the thing. Like, I don't want to sit through this, man, I've been doing this forever and listen to my testimony. You ever been to events and the guy comes on stage and he's like, hey, thanks for having me. It's amazing to speak here in Sydney, Australia. It's amazing to be here. Thank you so much. My name is Steve. And for the last five years, I've done this and then this and then this. Five minutes later. And I've also done this and done this, and I'm this sales guy, and I've done this and I've done that. And the audience is like, I don't care about you. <laughs> like, right? And they're qualifying themselves for five minutes. You know, it's like, oh, look at these testimonials. Oh, and I got this one guy named, named Matt. And Matt was my client, and he crushed it with a million dollars in sales in one day. You know, and then look at look at Sally. Sally did all, and he's like, I'm like, oh my God, is there any value in this? Like, are you teaching it or are you trying to sell yourself? Like, what is happening? And at that point, all the audience is like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> or like a bad webinar. Oh, oh, webinars do that. I can't stand it. I'm with you. I, I can't blame you. Uh, it, it sounds awful. But I, I, <laughs> look, I think the way – I think what, you, what you're saying, and I'm not sure if it's a question so much as more of a statement, but – Look, I think saying, like, if you're trying to sell people these days, you have to be different, right? Because, again, yes. what you just described there is a fairly generic, and I'm sure you being, you know, someone with the experience you do in terms of speaking, you know, that approach is the classic way of how not to start your talk, right? Yeah. Oh, and, that is 100% true. Right? And if I was trying to sell you, let's say, I'm, you know, I'm not a speaking coach, but yeah, I think, look, hey, Sean, you know, I'm sure you've probably got a coach already, but can I ask, you know, where, what, what part do you think you're speaking, you know, what thing right now would make the biggest difference in your speaking career? Mm. What would make a difference in my speaking career? Yeah. What do you think is the one thing? For me, I've, I already know the problem I solve. I want to expand target market I think not not like the mm-hmm. niche like not that but but can it be applied somewhere else and can I expand my target market or should I remain niche down I need to be very clear about who it is that I act actually speaking to I know that I, when I talk about leadership I speak to to the higher level leadership when I speak resilience, pretty much everybody, because it's a resilience, you know, conference, you know, whatever. You know, for businesses, you know, I'm telling them, I'm talking directly to the owners. You know, for entrepreneurs, I'm talking directly to them. But can it be applied in other places? I don't know. Mm-hmm. That would be a and huge difference me, if I knew. So let me ask you this. what When you say huge difference, what difference would that make? Would it be kind of like an earnings figure for you? Or oh, for be- sure. For sure, it would yeah. it would it would make me a more well rounded speaker because I can speak I can I can tailor my signature talks more to that to that audience and really hit my target person. I'm really oh, connecting yeah. with them, which would then result in more money. I could command higher fees because I'd get a I'd get a direct result. Okay, and if, if you don't want me asking, like, how much higher would it make? Would it be like a couple of ten thousand dollars a year, or are we talking? Uh, more than that, or less than that? Oh, I'd be uh, more than that because I would be speaking. You know, if I get if I get booked for seventy five hundred dollars, and I can I can get one thing clear, and it makes that shift in my mind and shift in my talk, and it shifts my positioning. I could command ten or even twelve k a speech. 
And if I speak 20 times a year, just that extra, you know, $2,500, even if I spoke 10 more times could, could be the difference between zero and an extra 25,000 a year, 50,000 a year. If I do 20. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, look, if it's going to make that big a difference, I'm not sure if you, if you're open to talking about it, but we've got a program which costs X amount of dollars, um, which has got a proven track record in helping people figure out their niche, know exactly where they can take you and then actually helping them, you know, deliver on what you've talked about there. So would that be something of interest to you? You want to have a look at? Um, I could definitely take a look. Oh yeah. So <laughs> like why wouldn't of, I? That, why wouldn't <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like why wouldn't I? <laughs> you may, like, you know what I mean? It's like, well, I've got a program that does this, does this. I mean, it speaks to the need. Why yeah. wouldn't I? And look, if you can do that reliably, if you can get, yes, if you can speak to the need and then get people to go, well, yeah, why wouldn't I? Or I'd be an idiot not to almost, right? Yep. Like it's, then it, it's a no brainer. But then it comes down to, um, yeah, well, that program's 15,000. Oh, well, <laughs> crap. <laughs> you know, like the qualifying part of the sale, I think, is the hardest. Right, because I might be talking to a guy who just had a kid who can't afford 10k or 5k or whatever it is, you know. Um, I mean, if you just don't have the money, you just don't have the, like. And then and what I really hate is, well, can you borrow it? Yeah, let me go into more debt because I already can't afford what you're saying. Let me go into more debt. That, that, that's a great idea. Yeah. Can you borrow it from your mom? Yeah, because mom's gonna, you know, give me her baby boy. You know, gonna give me some money, like. You know, so after it's money conversation, I think that people are like, I mean, I don't have a problem paying. I mean, I pay for stuff all the time, you know, but I'm very quick to say, oh, 10K. I'm like, yeah, man, I don't have that. I can't just drop a 10K right now. But but it's your business. You got to care. Listen to me. You're not listening. I can't just pull 10K out of my butt. I physically don't have 10K to drop on that, like all at once, mm. like that. That's not going to happen, you know, and I get, and I get some of those sometimes people are like, Ooh, that's, I was like, well, I could take payments. We'll do it. We'll do it in, in, in twos, you know, we'll split it up half now, half later. We could do that. We could, you know, so, so I've made it kind of affordable that way, but people think that, Oh, they said no, because, um, because they're cheapies. Well, maybe they just don't have it. Maybe, maybe that person isn't your client because you mm-hmm. serve seven figure business owners and he's not a seven figure business owner. Like sometimes the qualification just didn't take place. Absolutely, and look, that's 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 pretty really important to take care of early on. And yes, and and this is where you know even you know before we'd have that conversation like we just did is talking about you know look, I sell programs which are fifteen to twenty grand. You know, being really upfront about the money early on. Oh yeah, because... I think that'll qualify a lot too. Like, wow, that's. That's that's so. Let's say I got let's say I got fifty k for for a budget. You know, I I got fifty k. You know, and uh, and you say, hey, listen, I'd love to have a conversation with you. I got some programs I think that'll help. Like, cool. I was like, well, I see one program in particular that you know get clear on this, get clear on this. It's about fifteen k. If you cure, if you know, if, if it's in your if it's in your price range, you know, I'd love to have a conversation about it. Like, yeah, I think that's in my price range. Let me, let me see what it's about. You know? So it's, it's that, you know, cause all of a sudden you're going to be like, holy shit, 15 K like, Oh my God. You know? And sometimes it's a big investment for, for somebody, you know? Mm. And so what I, what yeah. I like to say is maybe it's not for you, but would you like to hear more in case you know somebody that it's for or, you know, whatever. So there's that. Mm. So mm. man, what an amazing conversation, man. I really appreciate you coming on, uh, coming on the show. And, um, man, where can the listeners find you? Yeah, cool. Look, really easy. Just uh, pop into um, my company's called the 24, so 24 hour H O U R sales coach. So 24 hour sales coach.com. Um, if you've got questions, feel free to just pop onto there. Uh, we'll do the same on Facebook. Um, and you'll be able to find me there. Pop me a question if you've got challenges, you know, growing a business, or you're, you, know, you know, you've got issues with engaging with clients. Um, even if you just, you know, like uh, I often do, kind of 
initial coaching calls where you know, there's no charge and it's just trying to work out like, how can I better engage um, with my client base? How do I, you know, how do I increase my pricing for my business? How do I, you know, how do I motivate my sales right. team? How do I get them to, you know, to lift their production? So um, yeah, feel free to, to do that. Love it. Love it. Again, man, thank you so much for your time coming all the way from Australia. My pleasure, Sean. Speak to you soon. Life Transformation Radio listeners, an amazing guest impacting the world, literally the world around him. If anything resonated with the conversation that we had today, please reach out to him at 24hoursalescoach.com. You will not regret it. And as we close, I always say, live your brand. Find opportunities every day to live out the core values that you hold deep in your heart. And I call this living your brand. So until next episode, live a great life.